Hey everybody, it's Rob. I'm back. I'm going to do something a little different today. Uh, today we're going to talk about what I think are some of the entry-level pen testing certifications that are out there and if they actually prepare you for an entry-level or junior-level pen testing role. So with I've taken these tests and I've passed them um, so I can I have a good idea of uh, you know what they entail and how I had to study for them and the information that you get out of them and um, I think I can provide some commentary on my thoughts around if they prepare you for a, a role in pen testing or not. Just to give you a little background on myself, I've been in IT for 28 years. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been involved in uh, managing help desks, managing projects, acquiring businesses, divesting businesses. Um, I've you know had to deal with Visa MasterCard standards. I've been a network administrator, I've been a manager, I've opened new facilities, I've worked on things like NIST frameworks and all kinds of stuff. I've had a pretty varied career and I'm very blessed for the experiences that I've had. So what I did was I started with CompTIA. To give you a little um, background on that, I've been a CompTIA certification holder since 2002, started with the Network Plus. So I've, I've always been a big fan of CompTIA. Um, I think they're good general level uh, certifications for things that, you know, you want to get involved in. So I did some research. Um, to be fair to CompTIA, um, I'm going to be talking about version 2 of the Pentest Plus because right when I scheduled the exam, they had just come out with the version 3. I don't even think it was available for me to sign up for. Um, so I did, I did take version 2. So my comments around CompTIA Pentest Plus are, Plus are it's not going to prepare you for a, a pen testing role. Um, do I think it's a general background in pen testing? Sure. Um, they're pretty heavy on the front end part of it, which is the business side, you know, setting up the agreements and the MSAs and the rules of engagement, and the get out of jail free cards and all of that kind of stuff, which is important. Um, but this exam suffers from the same problems that most multiple choice exam suffer from, which is the lack of practical hands-on stuff. They do say they have some quote-unquote performance-based questions, but I'm going to be honest with you. They're just they're just not the same as a, an exam that requires you to actually do pen testing, okay? Um, you know, is it is it worth the 400 bucks or whatever that you have to, to pay to take it? I mean, that's, that's a personal choice for you. If you want to start with a basic exam to, to get you some background in pen testing, then sure, go for it. Um, but don't, don't have the illusions that once you get the pen, ten, pen test plus that all of these companies who are looking for red teamers and offensive security engineers are going to be knocking on your door. Uh, cause they're not, they're not. Okay. Um, so that's CompTIA's pen test plus it's, it's a multiple choice test that I believe you'll face at a minimum 85 questions. Uh, there'll be seven, several questions. Um, that are quote unquote performance based or uh, what they call performance based. Um, overall, I, I did what I'm not a huge fan of this exam. I think um, if you want to take a great CompTIA exam, you should look at the CISA Plus. I think that exam was fantastic. It taught me a lot. Even the quote unquote performance questions were, I thought, legit. Um, you know, they have you do tasks that a, a SOC analyst for sure would be engaged in. So um, that is the pen test plus. Next, we're going to move to the one that everyone loves to hate, and that is the certified ethical hacker. Um, I first and foremost will tell you this is an expensive certification and that I would wait until uh, EC Council has its twice annual sale, at which point the packages are 50% uh, of what they normally are. Uh, and that's exactly what I did. I believe they do it once in the summer and then they do it towards the end of the year during the holidays where, you know, the package that normally would cost like 2000 bucks is like a thousand bucks. Um, with that thousand bucks, you get actually a lot. You get um, training, you get the materials for the, the, the exam. Uh, you get a voucher for the ANSI exam, which is the multiple choice question. Uh, test and then you also I didn't realize it when I bought it at the time but you get a voucher for the practical exam as well as the additional uh, practice range for the uh, practical exam do I think this exam prepares you for 
becoming a pen tester. No, not at all. I think this exam is what it is built as, as a hacking exam. Um, as in fact, EC Council has the certified penetration testing professional certification that they offer, which I did buy during their sale, and I'm going to be taking in 2025. Um, I do think the knowledge that I gained from doing the, the training and taking the you know the, the practice tests and the practice range stuff um, I think was was great. I think it's really um, the the prerequisite knowledge that you need to move into pen testing. You know how to use Wireshark, um, things like encryption and steganography, uh, how to you know. Um, understand what tool i mean they cover so many tools on in the training that you're going to have tool overload um there's really good um osint stuff in the, in the training and overall I, I thought it was a worthwhile experience for what i paid for which is when it was 50 percent off uh, i took the ANSI exam which is 125 questions uh it was like every other uh, multiple choice question exam you're ever going to take where they try and trick you and the answers are you know, and questions are vague and you have to tr kind of do your best. If you know the material, you'll pass the exam. Um, I will say that the um, practice exams they give you for the ANSI exam are excellent. In this, they give you two and they do not give you the right answers. So if you take the exam and you fail it, you won't know what you got right and what you got wrong. So you just got to keep taking the exam. You have to know the material, in other words. You can't memorize questions and answers, which is what a lot of people do is they go through practice exams, they see what they got right, they see what they got wrong, they memorize what, you know, the, the answer, the right answer to the question, and then suddenly they go from failing these practice exams to passing them. But have they really learned the material? And I think uh, EC Council has done a great job with that. It was frustrating in a sense that I'm like, damn, I failed and I'm not 100% sure what I got right or what I got wrong and what I got to study harder. Um, but it just makes you go back and make sure you understand all the material because you have to, okay? Uh, the practical exam was fantastic. I, I had a lot of fun taking the practical exam, to be honest. It's 20 questions and, you know, it give you six hours to do it and you're maybe like, wow, 20 questions, six hours. But let me tell you, I used five hours and 45 minutes of that six hours, and I passed with an 18 out of 20. Um, I, if I was going to take one of these, just one, I would take the practical. I think it was uh, a good exam. It, you know, makes you think, and you have to do a lot of, uh, of things that, you know, maybe I had never, never done before. Uh, you know, they cover Android hacking and all that stuff. And I, I'm a, I've been an iPhone guy for 20-something years, so I... I have very little experience with Android, so I learned a lot just from that. So, you know, just to sum up with Certified Ethical Hacker, you know, it gets beat up a lot. It is one of those um, HR gatekeeper certs where a lot of the jobs ask for it. Um, you know, do I do I recommend it? I, I mean, I, I think it was fair for the money I paid, and I enjoyed the training, and I enjoyed the exams. You know, people can beat up on it all they want. I, I think it was pretty good, so, but it certainly is not uh, going to prepare you for a, a, a junior role in pen testing. Uh, I think it prepare, prepares you to take the training to get um, a, a junior role. Uh, if you don't know a whole lot about computers, which if there's everybody and their brothers trying to get into security these days, then I would say this is a good exam for you to take because you're going to learn a lot of the base knowledge needed to move further. Uh, I took version 12. They're up to version 13 right now, which includes some AI. All right, next. Next on the list, we have the EJPT from INE Security, which was formerly known as eLearn Security. Um, this exam is moving closer to that, hey, this is a mock pen test. There's 35 questions you have to answer based on pen testing activities that you perform on a network. I will say first and foremost, um, it's reasonably priced. Uh, it includes training, and the training is excellent. Uh, Alexis Ahmed does the, the training, um, and I came out of this with a solid understanding of Metasploit. Um, he really does a good job in, in, in showing you the capabilities of Metasploit, including you know how to get around, how to use the database feature, how to port forward, how to pivot, uh, all the important things, how to manage sessions that you're going to you're going to need to be able to do in a pen test um, if you use the Metasploit framework. The exam, 35 questions. You have to answer those questions. Uh, some of them are multiple choice. A lot of them are fill it in. There's a couple of dynamic flags that you need to put defined. 
Um, I very much enjoyed taking this exam. Um, I think this is a mature exam that uh, INE has done a good job with. Uh, the one thing I will comment on is the use of an in-browser Kali instance in, in a lab or exam environment without internet access, which, you know, I, I'm not a fan of. Um, all of the major pen testing certification companies now, like Offsec, TCM Security, even EC Council for their CPEN, they allow you to use your own Kali instance and connect to the exam environment via VPN, which is the most realistic way to me, you know, I just am not a fan of these in-browser instances of Cali. I think they're slow, and I think the exam, which took me about six hours, took me that long because, you know, the, you, you're using a, a web browser version of Cali. So there's all the problems and issues that uh, um, you would think would be associated with that happened. You know, it, it never crashed or anything like that, but... It wasn't snappy or speedy or fast like it would be if I was using my machine on a VPN, okay? Uh, INE has the um, Big Brother cert for this, the ECPPT, which I had just taken. And I have to say, my opinion of that is very poor compared to this. So I would recommend the EJPT for folks. I would not recommend their Big Brother certification, and I will uh, cover that in detail when I do a, I have a written review out, um, right now that you can go on my LinkedIn page and, and see, um, but I will do a video review of the big boy professional level pen testing certs when I get through them. So anyway, um, do I think the EJPT prepares you for an entry level or junior role? I would say almost. I would say this is much, much closer. If you combine this with the Certified Ethical Hacker and the Pentest Plus, I would say yes, you are prepared for a junior role, right? A very entry level junior role in pen testing. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the uh, practical junior penetration tester. TCM Security, let me tell you, they have something special here with this whole program that they've put together. Uh, very reasonably priced. Um, if you scroll down here, I think it's 249 bucks. Um, you get access to their practical ethical hacking course. Uh, Heath Adams does a great job. Uh, he's very genuine, it seems to me, like he really wants you to succeed. There's a lot of things to like about the way they have this set up. You know, you get with that 249, you get the training, you get one exam attempt, you get a free retake. Those things are for life. They do not expire, those vouchers. You get two days to complete the exam, two days to write the report. And again, I just want to emphasize, write the report. When you do penetration testing, by far the most important thing is the report. And that is because that is what the customer is paying for. That is the deliverable. If you are taking an exam and they don't, they don't expect you to write a report, that is a red flag in my opinion. Is it make it that you shouldn't take that exam? No, not at all. But I, I also think that it doesn't prepare you for everything that you need to be prepared for to be a penetration tester. Because if you watch any of these pen testing videos out there, and I'm not a pen tester, they will tell you, you know, it's like for every hour they spend testing, it's like three or hours they spend writing reports, okay? And there's a reason for that. That's what the client is paying for. They're paying for that report, okay? That's what you're going to give them at the end of the engagement. That's how important that is. I will tell you this. This exam was a super realistic. When I came out of this, I felt like I had just done a penetration test. Um, you connect via VPN. Um, you use your own Kali instance. Um, you do the tasks. If you watch the practical ethic, ethical hacking class um, and you do the training and you set up the lab and you do the exercises that he tells you to do, everything you need to pass the exam is in that one course. You do not need anything else, okay? You can certainly do some supplemental studying. I think if you have these other certifications, they're a good base for this. Um, but everything that you need is in that course. The exam took me 12 hours. Now, I will say this. I had domain admin in three hours, okay? But it took me an additional nine hours to get the report put together and in the format that I felt comfortable to submit it to TCM for review. And again, that lines up with pen testing, right? I just said, for every hour they spend testing, they spend two, three, four hours on report writing, which is exactly what it worked out for me. Now, I am a little anal when it comes to stuff, and I did fight Word 
uh, and formatting a bit for uh, the report. But legit, it took me 12 hours and the vast majority of it was on the report. Um, I am going to take their PNPT, uh, which is the Big Brother test, and um, I did sign up, like I said, for EC Council CPENT, and I am studying for the OSCP, so I plan to do another one of these videos um, for the big boy pro pro professional level certs at some point in the future, uh, towards the end of probably 25. Uh, but I, just to recap, this one, this PJPT, by far, by far, is the one that I think if I studied past this exam, I would at least not feel like an idiot walking into an entry level role, right? I would at least be able to maybe understand the lingo. I would understand the requirements. You know, I, I think if they, you know, whatever tasks they give junior people, I would certainly be able to do, okay? Uh, EJPT, almost there. Uh, you definitely need a little bit of supplemental knowledge uh, to, to be able to, um, to be a an entry level penetration tester, but I do think that you know, if you get through that, you could potentially get a you know be prepared for a role. Okay, certified ethical hacker, great for pr great for prerequisite knowledge. Uh, certainly didn't prepare me like for any kind of penetration testing role. I, I just would not. Um, I just don't think that it, it's it's not even billed as that. It's it's a hacker exam, and that's what it is. Okay, and then pen test plus, like I said. Not the best of the bunch by far, um, but to be fair to, to CompTIA, I did take V2, so hopefully they made some changes to V3. Anyway, hope this helps you guys. Um, if anybody has any questions, let me know. Um, I'll be doing more exam reviews. I've taken a lot of exams over the last two years, and um, I'd be happy to share my experiences with everybody. So see you next time, and thanks for watching.